Peter Foy spoke with Action 7 News reporter Will Carr about the crushing custody loss of his seven-year-old daughter, Kate. And anybody who's been around me and my children for more than five, ten minutes can see the love and the bond that's there. Our family court system operates on the basis that it says uh, we will award the child, in effect, to, to one or the other parent. I want to be your father and I want to raise you and I love you very much. I love you more than anything in the world. In a society that doesn't recognize father's parental rights and believes men to be inessential to children's well-being. So they now have custody of your child, you don't. Nothing else is important to me in this world other than my relationship with those kids. This keeps you away from your kids. It keeps me away from my kids. Did you know before the year 2013, the FBI defined rape as only pertaining to females? Males have the added burden of facing a society that doesn't believe that rape can happen to them at all. Society sort of isn't very much set up for men speaking. We never talk about it, it's not really referenced in film or television or media reports, but it exists and the stats for London are alarming. The reality is that a man every hour experiences some form of sexual assault in London, and that's just adults. This is about a crime, and I think we have to sometimes remember this. This is about somebody or some people taking the power and control that one has over their own body. No one deserves to be assaulted. No one deserves to be coerced. No one deserves harassment or unwanted sexual contact. Our resources and our compassion in general should be neither finite nor gender segregated. The 2010 National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey included a category of sexual violence called being made to penetrate, either by physical force or coercion, or when the victim was drunk or high or otherwise unable to consent. When those cases were taken into account, the rates of non-consensual sexual contact basically equalized. With 1.27 million females and 1.267 million males claiming to be victims. And that really surprises people because we hear about the one in four girls that experiences sexual abuse. But when you tell people it's one in six boys, the reaction we get is that's really not possible. If you are a criminal defendant, it is better to be a woman than a man. For the same crime and with a similar criminal history, men are imprisoned much more frequently and for much longer sentences. Professor Sonia Starr at the University of Michigan Law School, she examined a huge database of federal criminal cases. She found that women are significantly more likely than men to avoid charges, to avoid convictions, completely. And they are twice as likely to avoid incarceration if convicted. Now on average, men receive about 63% longer sentences than women arrested for the same crime. Now, Professor Starr estimates that the gender gap in sentencing is about six times as large as the, as the sentencing gap between black and white defendants. The over-incarceration of males may be one of the most serious gender inequities of our time, yet this injustice is nearly invisible. According to the Orange County DA's office, Catherine Q. Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife. Oh taking his penis and throwing it into the garbage disposal. I mean, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know why he filed for divorce. I don't know what was going on between them. However, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we know that the majority of violent crime victims, the majority of war casualties, and the majority of the victims of state and police violence are men. Consider campus crime. It's actually men who need safe spaces more than women. Because according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, men are twice as likely to be victims of violent crime on campus. Just to, just to give context, around the world men are three times more likely to die violently, yet it is an epidemic of violence against women. There were approximately 12,000 murder victims in 2013. 78% were men. The most credible social science research demonstrates that no matter the gender of the perpetrator, violence is more likely to be targeted against men and boys than women or girls, starting before the age of one. 
If we hate domestic violence, well, in the US at least, domestic violence cases that are women on man make up about 40% of the cases of domestic violence. Women are more likely to use a weapon, and men are less likely to report the domestic violence because of the type of society we have. It is a little bit like sexist, like if somebody cut a woman's breast off, no one would be sitting laughing, like it's not that right to sit around laughing about it if we think about it. It's different though. It is different. One's floppy and <laughs> At the same time, feminism and the wider culture have managed to convince us that violence against men is not normalized because it feels normal to us. And it's not systemic because acceptance of it is wired into our limbic systems. Stop domestic violence against women and children. And all I could think of was, what about domestic violence against men? I mean, either domestic violence sucks or we hate men and we think it's cool when they get stabbed in the throat by their wife. We have legislation and policy enacted specifically to address male violence against women because one in three women will be raped or assaulted in their lifetimes. For the one in one men who will be, we have nothing special. Now there's no question that women sometimes suffer severe harassment and abuse on the internet. But what happens when men run afoul of the feminist thought police? They found that more women than men are sexually harassed, about 7% of women and 4% of men, but that men were the primary targets of threats. They found 10% of men compared to 6% of women. The British researchers found that about 40% of the abusive tweets sent to women were sent by other women. The researchers found that men were more likely to be victims of abusive tweets than women. In particular, male politicians received more than six times as many abusive tweets as female politicians. Another study by a professional polling organization found that males age 19 are the group most likely to be affected by trolling or bullying among teenagers. Now the Pew findings suggest that overall men face as much or more abuse than women. No one should have to endure serious harassment and threats to their safety, online or otherwise. Prostate cancer is the most common form of cancer in men. Approximately 80% of men above the age of 70 have prostate cancer. What breast cancer is to females, prostate cancer is for males. One in eight women will develop breast cancer over a lifetime, while one in six men will develop prostate cancer over a lifetime. Breast cancer is the third most common cancer behind lung and prostate cancer. But the US government has spent more than twice the amount on breast cancer research than for prostate cancer research. In fact, breast cancer gets more than double the funding of any cancer, not just prostate cancer. In your insurance news, if you think only women get breast cancer, think again. 45-year-old Scott Cunningham of North Carolina can attest to that. In fact, the local health district does have a federally funded program, but just as Scott was told, it's very specific on who qualifies. With no insurance, he called the local health department. And asked if I could get a screening for breast cancer. And they told me that, that they only screen women. Now, am I saying that it's a bad thing that breast cancer is getting all this funding and attention? No. But what I am saying is that it's unfortunate that no other cancer gets anywhere near the amount of funding and attention that breast cancer does. Um, the dirty, sweaty, smelly, dangerous jobs are still predominantly male-dominated, aren't they? There may be a few women but the lethal professions are largely a male preserve. And uh, they still kill men on the job at 20 times the rate uh, of women. Well, is it any surprise that the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that every year about 5,000 Americans die in workplace accidents, 92% of them men. Throughout history, of course, men have always been expected to sacrifice their bodies in labor and to sacrifice their lives in war. And though there are many women serving in the armed services, fewer than 8% profess a desire to engage in combat. If you visit a veterans hospital or a rehabilitation center, male privilege is not the first idea that will come to your mind. Suffice to say that if all men walked off the proverbial job at work and at home, for three days, we would be three years cleaning up the mess. What I'm going to talk about today is usually considered illogical 
a lot of people feel offended when I talk about it. It is usually politically incorrect, especially in the atmosphere environment that we are right now. Today is International Men's Day. Some argue that we don't need such an event, given that so many areas of society are still heavily tilted in favour of men. Uh, you have to excuse me for laughing, that the idea that men don't have the opportunity to ask questions in this place is a frankly laughable thing. There's a very big difference between but, men raising issues and the raising of men's issues. But, what is the point of all this? Because many people say, well, in a world of inequality, yeah. most days are men's days, if not all of them. Yeah, I mean, it's a concept that's routinely mocked. Indeed, you know, Jess Phillips, the Labour MP, did so at the Backbench Business Committee two weeks ago. Jess Phillips, you were saying it was laughable. Do you regret saying that now? Was that the right reaction to burst out laughing? The thing that I said was laughable. I stand by... All International Men's Day is, is a way for men to make fun of feminism and to make fun of sexism that females actually experience and it's disgusting. Is it really so bad to talk about these things? Are you really so selfish that you can't bear to see attention on men's issues for a day? I, I can't say that I think there is a need for International Men's Day debate. Um, family courts, divorce, alcoholism, substance abuse, homelessness, imprisonment, punitive prison fines. You know, these are things that disproportionately affect men. That's why we need an International Men's Day to talk about a broad range of issues. All we want is the ability to talk about things that are killing us, and that's not misogynistic. Hell, look at York University. They cancelled their Men's Day events after public pressure from feminists. But I would still talk about it because it's much needed, especially if we all believe that justice is the right of every individual regardless of their gender. Being a normal boy is a serious liability in today's classroom. Around the world, boys are more likely than girls to be classified as low achievers, which means they were proficient in uh, reading, math, science, and problem solving. Women get better grades, they win most of the honors and prizes, and they're far more likely to go to college. Today, women earn 62% of associate's degrees, 57% of BAs, 60% of masters, and 52% of doctorates. Our schools do a much better job educating women than men. The underachievement of boys in education compared to uh, girls. Male deficits in education are far more serious today than they were in the past. The type of evidence we'll be seeing is that for the first time in U.S. history, our sons will have less education than their dads. If we take this worldwide, the U.N. found this year that boys have fallen behind girls in every single one of the 70 developed nations. Male underachievement is everyone's concern. These are our sons. These are the young men with whom our daughters will build a future. If boys are in trouble, so are we all. Men and boys are more likely to be raised with feminist values now than at any point in history, and yet their suicide rates are soaring. Not just relative to women, but relative to 10 years ago. Did you know that suicide is the biggest killer of men under 45 in the United Kingdom? I didn't know that. Suicide in the UK takes 12 male lives every day. In the United States, 89 men per day. That's about four men every hour. Because the numbers are really quite shocking when it comes to male suicide in this country. More than 4,800 men took their own lives in 2013. I thought about it and I was extremely disturbed about it, but I did not react or act until I saw this video online. He hung himself the same night. 41% of the men surveyed in the United Kingdom felt like they couldn't talk about their feelings. And I also think this may be why suicide rates for men skyrocket after divorce. You haven't just taken away his kids, his wife, his assets, and, and a good chunk of his income. You've effectively stripped him of a huge part of the male identity he's built around himself. But I just want to tell you that suicide is never a solution because 
if you feel that your life isn't worth living or you're a burden believe me when you're gone the burden that you will leave will be a million times heavier and harder to bear for the people left behind These issues need attention, and uh, and frankly, men have to scream to be heard. They just do, even by other men, and that's just freaking sad.